Welcome to Wilderness to Table. This season, I'm going to show you just how versatile wild game can be. Get him in, get him in. Yeah! Oh! And now we got dinner fight. It's a big ass hog that's three times my size. Nice yeah. shot. Did I get him? You hit him. You oh smoked him. I don't even know what to say right now. If he takes off with you, uh, just step to the side, okay? Just hold on to him. He'll just take you for a ride. No! This is one killer dish. Pun intended. So my alligator is cooked through, so now we are ready to plate. So I reached out to Razor Ranch in beautiful Florida. We're gonna go hunting for a multitude of animals and I'm gonna show you creative, delicious recipes that you can easily do at home or at hunt camp. And that'll make a vegetarian put a tree stand over their garden. Right there, I'm telling you. My name is Brie Van Scotter. I'm a professionally trained chef, author, and hunter. My mission is to create some of the most amazing wild game recipes with meat I gather on my hunting and fishing adventures. This is Wilderness to Table. When I started researching where to hunt for my wild game meat this season, I found Razor Ranch located in Central Florida. Known for its domestic and exotic wildlife, this ranch features a wide variety of game you can hunt. As a chef, this serves as a perfect place to harvest a diverse selection of wild game meat for all my recipes. Today I will be hunting with Jordan Spencer, one of the top guides at Razor Ranch. Jordan and I will be hunting for Axis deer known for the best tasting venison you can put on your plate. Good morning, Jordan. Good morning, Miss Bree. How, How are you? you doing? You ready to go hunt? Yes, ma'am. We finally got this rain to pass through. Got a little sun peeping through. You think those axis deer are gonna be out now? I think we can go find them in the field now. Let's do it. All right. Axis deer are originally from India where they're referred to as cheetah or spotted deer. They're a beautiful species with a rust colored coat covered with white spots, very similar to white tail fawn. They are extremely vocal, letting out distinctive alarm calls to communicate when they sense danger, making them a very challenging hunt. Good deal. This is your first axis deer hunt, right? My first axis deer hunt. Oh, yep. that's exciting. I don't know if I'm more excited to, to like actually get one and hunt it or eat it. <laughs> because they're the best, they're the best tasting deer I've heard, right? Absolutely. Yes, so, ma'am. You told me last night there's a dude out here with velvet on. That's right. Right? Yeah, that's who we're that's who we're looking for for you. We're we're obviously probably going to go after first shot opportunity with the weather we have here. But yeah, I really want to get you on that that buck that's still clean, full velvet. So how, when do they typically drop their velvet? We're still about a month away from them shedding their velvet it's here. Late. Yeah, it's a lot later than whitetail. They're, it's on a different pattern, but. And so do they hang out all day and kind of graze? No, it's gonna it's gonna rain here. Yeah, so we're, gonna we're gonna get gonna some rain. Most of the time we can catch them uh, in the fields most of the day. Uh, when they do typically lay down for a little bit, it's in those open fields. So okay. we can get eyes on them and see where we need to get set up for. Okay. But what we want to do now, uh, we're going to just continue to cruise along these palmettos. Mm -hmm. We're going to get out here actually, and we're going to walk along these palmettos and we're going to check this first open field. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll just keep cruising along these palmettos, stay hunkered down behind them, because mm -hmm. when they catch movement, they're gone okay. really fast. Okay. So we're gonna go slow, and we'll keep glassing these open fields and hopefully find that guy on the full velvet clean and get your okay. first access deer. I'll follow your lead. All right. So today's the day. We're going after access buck, and I'm gonna give you a quick tour of all the things that I'm gonna be bringing with me. We're starting off with a Howa Model 1500, and I have a Riton 3x15 scope mounted on top. Then I'm going to be using the 6x Creedmoor for my cartridges. And because binos are very important in the field, I'll be using Riton binos as well. Then, because we are in Florida and snakes are prevalent, I'm going to be wearing Irish Setter's new snake boots. And because knives are super important in the field, I like to carry this Benchmade knife with me. And for butchering, as y'all know I love that, I will be using three of my favorite Benchmade knives for butchering my deer. So this is all the gear that I'll be taking with me. Oh! 
table is actually my little blog that could is what I like to say. Um, I started off, my career is a professional chef. I started off in fine dining my whole entire career. I moved to the south and I started hunting because I wanted to source my own organic protein, like true organic protein. And as soon as I got into hunting and I started to create recipes, obviously I'm looking online to see what other people did and there was such a lack of wild game recipes. I know how to grill a backstrap and I know how to make a popper and I just felt those two dishes that were so popular with hunters were not doing the animal justice. I started Wilderness to Table as this little blog to showcase what I was doing as a professional chef in my kitchen with wild game as I use as much of the animal as I possibly could. And I just wanted to showcase the versatility and how amazing it is. And it is my mission to show you how wonderful wild game is and it's so good for you. It's a little windy, Jordan. No, it's, it's, we kind of have a bad wind through this field. So what we need to do now, Bree, is we're gonna sneak through the woods here okay. and we're gonna circle around so we can get up one of these deer. Gotcha. We're hoping that they're in uh, one of these two other open fields. But if we don't sneak around now, it's gonna kill us. Yep. So let's go ahead and get back in the cart okay. and sneak around yeah. here. Axe's deer meat is mild in taste, extremely tender, and exceptionally low in fat. Ask around and you'll find out that axes are known by hunters to be the best tasting venison you can find. Their alert call is a bark. So when you hear a bark, you know that they know you're there. So the morning, which I thought started off really well, we came across our first herd of axes deer. So we creep in very slowly so they don't hear us. We set the sticks out. I, I slowly put my rifle on the sticks. Yep, we got busted. And then sure enough, the herd disappears. So this happened about two or three times this morning. Nope. Nope. Maybe. Nope. And nope. We kept having to go to different herds and try to sneak up on them, and it was quite the adventure. We'll get back on that group that has three different shooters in it. And then, of course, it's Florida, and the wind, the weather can change in an instant. It started pouring down rain. I'm over here, like, in my jacket, ducking, and... <laughs> I usually don't wear all this makeup when I'm hunting regularly, but because it's the show, I have to, and I really didn't want to go back and do it again. Axis deer are highly sociable animals. Their herds can contain six to 30 individuals, two or three of them being stags. These animals are important consumers in the ecosystem of their habitat. Their diet usually consists of grasses, flowers, and fruits fallen from trees. In the 1860s, Axis deer were introduced to the island of Molokai, Hawaii, as a gift from Hong Kong to King Kamehameha. Back in the day, and that's how Axis deer actually made their first appearance to the US, and the Axis deer that are now on Maui and other Hawaiian items are actually the descendants of the two Axis deer that were brought to King Kamehameha. Man, Bree, we've been at it all day. <laughs> I know. We're gonna get on and feel that temperature dropping. Yep. I think they're gonna be back out in the fields. Out for dinner? Yeah, yep. I think so. I think they're gonna okay. be out in the fields wanting to get over to where they graze at. Uh-huh. We're gonna try and get up to this, this main big field where I've been seeing them at. Okay. And uh, we'll sneak around that corner, I'll, I'll glass, and then hopefully, 
put a stop on that. we got one this time. That's right. Let's go check this field, Bree. I have a good feeling. I do. I'm I think, excited. I think they this might is be where there. I've been seeing them in the evening. So we just gotta be real quiet, careful with our movement up here. So my plans for this animal, should I be lucky enough to harvest one, are to make a carpaccio. Now, it's not a typical venison dish you would see amongst the internet, but a carpaccio originated in Italy and you sear the outside of a very lean meat. So I am using the back strap and then we're going to slice it thin and serve it raw. And why I'm doing this is because access is the best venison you could possibly get, one of the best tasting venisons. So I want to show in its natural glory, I want to show you how beautiful and how amazing that meat tastes. In that herd, as we creeped up on them, we saw two shooter bucks. And lo and behold, the first one, he kind of walked off with the rest of the group. able to place a single shot and now we have dinner and I have shot my first axis deer today. The closer we get Bree, the more my mouth waters about what you're making tonight. <laughs> this is supposed to be some of the best tasting venison around which is exactly why I wanted to harvest an axis deer. Oh I'm excited. Help me pronounce it one more time. What are you making? <laughs> yeah, carpaccio. Carpaccio. Oh, wow. That's your first access buck. First access buck. Holy moly. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the meat that will provide for my table. Oh, tasty, tasty. pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Look at this dude. He's still got his velvet on. This mm. is my first buck with velvet on, too. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Jordan. I really appreciate all, all right. your hard work today on helping me get this access deer. It's really one I won't forget. Yes, ma'am. So I enjoyed you. it. I won't forget it. Well, should we go get the buggy and load them up? Yeah, let's go get the buggy and load them up. Let's do it. A venison backstrap is probably one of my favorite parts of the deer. But with venison, there are so many ways to get the most out of a deer like this axis. For instance, you can keep the hindquarter whole and smoke it low and slow. You can debone the shoulder, use the meat for slow cooked roast, and you can even use the delicious meat from the neck to make stews. So I just removed the back strap. It's probably the prized piece on this axis deer. And what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna use it as a carpaccio. Because this deer is so delicious, I'm going to sear it and, oh, and serve it almost raw. Okay, everyone, let's get cooking. 
So here we are, we are back at Hunt Camp and I have the back strap from my Axis deer that we harvested earlier today. So I'm so excited to show you this dish. Why? Because it's a carpaccio and it's not typically how you see venison done. A carpaccio is actually served raw. We're going to sear the outside and it's going to be raw in the middle and we're going to slice it really thin. We're going to serve it on top of a bed of arugula salad dressed with a lemon vinaigrette. It's going to be delicious and you're can't wait for you to try this at home. So let's get started. We're going to start by doing our vinaigrette first. So I'm gonna put this back strap down here and just let it set. Vinaigrettes are super easy. They're like my go-to staple to marinate or for salads, anything like that. I'm gonna show you my basic vinaigrette. It starts off with a shallot. We're going to small dice or bernois a shallot. So as they say, and we're gonna use my chef's knife. This is my favorite go-to all-purpose knife. This one just happens to be Bubba and I absolutely love it. So now I'm gonna burn while a shallot. It's a very small, we want really small bites of our shallot because we're going to be using them in a vinaigrette, which means they're not going to cook off. So we want them really small. We don't want people eating big chunks of um, onion, so to speak. So I'm starting off by making very small one eighth of an inch lines in my shallot, small little cuts. Then I'm gonna do that on this side. I'm gonna turn my shallot around and continue to make one eighth inch cuts. So super small and delicate. I'm just gonna toss the end. Then I'm gonna use my chef's knife and I'm gonna run through it one more time just to make sure that everything is nice and small for our dressing. So that was about, that was a small shallot. So I would say if you're going to measure it, it's probably gonna be about three full tablespoons of shallot, of chopped shallot, so to speak. Then we are going to add some lemon for our acid, because you always want an acid in your vinaigrette. I'm just gonna juice one whole lemon into our shallots, just like that. Trying to catch all the seeds here. Let's just get rid of those seeds. Okay, now to flavor our vinaigrette, we're going to add about one tablespoon of minced garlic. I just went ahead and did it. We're gonna mix that in. Then I'm going to use about one tablespoon of whole grain mustard. It is my favorite in vinaigrettes and I always bring it to Hunt Camp, whether I'm making sandwiches or salads, it's always a go-to. Then I'm just gonna give that a little whirl. Get that going in there, set that aside. And to bring it all together, we need an emulsifier and that is our olive oil. So we're going to pour in about a half a cup of olive oil right in there. Then before I whisk it all up, we're going to season it with kosher salt and pepper because you season at every step in cooking, right? Right. <laughs> if you're not, you should be. I'm just gonna wipe my hands and take my whisk. We're gonna get that going. And now we have a beautiful vinaigrette and it's gonna bring that nice acid to our um, carpaccio and our bitter arugula. I like arugula because it's slightly bitter than most lettuces and I think it just goes really well with acid and venison. So now that we have our, our vinaigrette made, we're gonna go ahead and get to the star of the show, which is our back strap. I'm very excited about this because this is my access back strap, which I harvested yesterday. It was quite the hunt, I'm sure you saw. So I'm gonna use my chef's knife and what I'm gonna do is trim the back strap of the silver skin. It's really, really important that you get all the, the silver skin off the back strap because silver skin will not cook down. There are some fats and, and little loins in, in venison or beef that will cook off during the cooking process, but silver skin will not. So be sure you always remove all of that so it's not chewy and you're not pulling anything out. So I'm just gonna go ahead 
I'm gonna make a little cut. It's a really tough, so you gotta kinda work at it. I like to make one strip just to get it going, and I run my knife up towards the silver skin, so not into the meat. Just like that. And then I'm just gonna keep making those little digging in, digging in there into the silver skin, pushing my knife through to create a little strip. See what I mean when I say it's tough? It's tough. <laughs> and I'm just gonna remove all of this. So what you're not seeing here is I have frozen this back strap for about 45 minutes. And I did this because I want, it's easier to cut thin pieces of meat when your meat is partially frozen. So I know that when I sear it, it's all gonna be up to room temperature by the time I serve it, but it's gonna help me get those nice thin slices, which is classic of a carpaccio. So carpaccio, I first had a carpaccio in Italy with my husband. We were traveling all throughout Italy and I just fell in love with it. So carpaccio, if you do not have venison or axis deer, but you can actually use it with any kind of venison like moose or elk, but you can also use it with beef. Just make sure you have a really good piece of beef, probably like a, ten a beef tenderloin. It would work exceptional for a carpaccio. So just make sure if you're ever eating it raw, just make sure you have the highest quality possible. And I of course have the highest quality because because I hunted it all on my own. So I am using one of my favorite workhorses in, the, in my kitchen, which is a chef's knife. I take it anywhere, even if I'm at hunt camp or wherever, if I'm traveling, doing cooking events. I never leave home without a chef's knife. It is the workhorse, like I said, of all the knives. You want the right tool for the right job, so that's why I always carry a chef's knife because it will really do anything. You do not want to put your paring knife to this beautiful piece of meat because it's not the right tool for the right job. So I'm removing just the last little bits of silver skin that were left over from when we processed our ac my access deer. So I have it just about finished. And then we're going to just trim them up so that it's all nice and even because when you're it's all nice and even it all cook at the same time and when we're searing it we really really want to make sure that it's all cooking at the proper time okay we got that we've got our back strap all de-skinned from the silver skin i'm going to wipe my hands off with some antibacterial wipes because i don't want to cross contaminate anything and then we're going to start searing. My mission as starting Wilderness to Table was to really showcase wild game in a beautiful light. My whole background is in fine dining and when I started to hunt for my food, I realized that there was a lack of creative, delicious wild game recipes that I actually wanted to cook in my kitchen. I really wanted to showcase, hey, I have all of this venison. I know how to grill a backstrap. But me as a fine dining chef, I know that I can do so much more and I wanted to show people. And my mission is always to eat head to tail, hunt, hunt, forage and grow. So I grow vegetables, forage for mushrooms, that type of thing. But it really started off the basis of me wanting pure organic protein. Let's get our stove on. We're going to put it on high heat because we want a hot, hot pan, okay? because we just want to sear and get all those Maillard reactions, which are the caramelization that happens in your pan and on the meat. There we go. That's what we want. So we're going to let that set. We're going to let that warm up. Now, I am using something that I really love for fat in my pan. I'm using beef tallow. I prefer it over a vegetable oil or a canola oil. It's just rendered beef fat, and I usually take it with me whenever I'm cooking, whether it's at town camp or events. I happen to love it. It does have a higher smoke point as well, which is really important when you're having a really hot pan and you wanna sear something. So that is what I'm gonna use in my pan. And now I'm going to add about three tablespoons of beef tallow to our pan to melt. And that is what we are going to sear the axis backstrap in. That go in. Help it out a little bit. 
while that is going, while that is melting and our pan is getting super hot, I am going to season our back strap. I like to keep things pure and simple. Access meat is some of the best venison you can get. So for this, I'm simply using kosher salt and black pepper to season my back strap. So I've got some kosher salt. I'm going to season very liberally. I am going at it. I'm not, none of this. No, no, no. You go like this. That's what you want. Don't be afraid of the salt. Don't be afraid of the seasoning. Now I'm going to do this black pepper. That's one side. I'm going to use my tongs and I'm going to flip it over and season the other side. And my beef tallow is already melting and my pan is steaming. So now now I'm going to sear. A sear is only going to take one, maybe two minutes max, if that. That's what you want to hear. So I'm, got, I'm not going to leave my pan. I'm going to watch it the whole time because I only want an eighth to a quarter inch sear on it. I don't want it to cook all the way through at all. Almost there. You can tell at the end of your back strap, how you're steering. Get that fat around there. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it over. Ooh, <laughs> it's beautiful and that's exactly what you want. You want that nice brown color. If you're really wanting to geek out, those brown colors in your pans are called Myad Reactions, and it's when the proteins release their sugar and it turns to what? Caramel. So that's what's happening in your pan. Okay, I'm about ready to pull this off my pan. How's it looking? Perfect. So I am going to take this and I'm going to put it on the clean side of my board and I want to let it rest for about five minutes before I start slicing into it or else we're going to lose all the beautiful juices that are in it, okay? So we're just going to turn this off. So I am choosing to make this ultra special and I am going to use a meat slicer to make sure I get those slices super thin. But if you do not have a meat slicer with you at hunt camp, um, you can also just use a very, very sharp chef's knife and just slice them really, really thin. So to make this a little bit easier for my slicer, I'm going to go ahead and slice my back strap in half to create two pieces just so that I don't have, gi have to sli slice giant pieces of back strap on the slicer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean up my workstation and we're gonna get ready for plating. I have cleared all the dirty dishes and now I'm gonna get ready and I'm going to slice and we're going to plate this fabulous Axis Carpaccio. So let's get started. I am going to take my slicer and we're going to use this. I mean, hello, perfect sear, right? That's what you're looking for. I'm going to place it on the slicer. Slicers can be very dangerous, y'all. I've seen some accidents. So I'm going to use the guard to help me. I have it on a setting. This one is about a two and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my slicer on and we're going to make small slices. So this is what you're looking for when you slice really, really thin. All right, here at one point, you can almost see through it. That's exactly what we want. to take slices of my axis backstrap. Now, I believe you eat with your eyes first, and so I like to make 
all my dishes beautiful even if we're here at hunt camp so that is just what i am going to do so i'm just going to place these around the plate just so it looks really pretty now to finish it off it's super easy i'm going to take a handful of arugula and I'm gonna place it right on top. Then I'm going to take our vinaigrette that we made earlier, and I'm gonna drizzle some of that beautiful vinaigrette over it. Then we always season again, right? So I'm gonna do just a little bit of kosher salt, just a little bit of black pepper, and because I want that crunchy saltiness goodness happening, I'm gonna to top it off with a little bit of Maldon flaked sea salt because nothing is better than biting into that little crunch of salt. Then I'm going to top it off with some capers that I just drained. Sprinkle that on top. Oh my gosh, it's looking like the dishes that I had in Italy. It's so fabulous. Then because every dish is better with cheese, I'm chopping it off with shaved Parmesan cheese. Because it wouldn't be a true carpaccio if it didn't have Parmesan cheese. I like cheese, so I'm gonna use all of it, okay? Don't judge me. You know you love cheese too. <laughs> and there you have it. That is our Access Buck. Venison carpaccio. And now I'm gonna take it to the guys and see what they think. Okay, Jordan, it's our Axis Buck. And what are we serving? Cappuccino. Or a carpaccio, more like it, right? I've heard such good things about it. I had to bring my buddy Taylor over here to try it with Oh, me. awesome. I cannot wait for you guys to try it. I'm super excited. So we worked really hard for this buck. We did. So I cannot wait for y'all to try it. Brie, what's this on top right here? Looks like this cheese with some capers in it, maybe? It's shaved Parmesan capers and a vinaigrette with a little bit of arugula, and our Axis Buck is actually served raw. Now, we don't have to be modest with this, right? We just no, take a whole can, bite, yeah, right? you can eat the whole plate later if you want. <laughs> Go for it. Later or now? Yep. Dun, dun, dun. Make sure you get all the good yeah. bits in there. Oh my, oh my gosh. Goodness. Have you that ever had raw access buck? Never had raw. No? Not raw. That's delicious. I'm gonna have to Never serve had raw access more often though. Right? Tell you that. Only with high quality. Listen, meat. that'll make a vegetarian put a tree stand <laughs> over their garden. Right there. I'm telling you. And they like it. One thing that can be better than success on a hunt is smiling faces at the dinner table. By the looks of things, my Axe's Deer Carpaccio was a hit. That is awesome. Well, what a day. We hunted so hard for my first Axe's buck. We were actually able to harvest him. We processed him and I used the back straps in one of the most beautiful ways I thought possible by making a Carpaccio. So if you would like this recipe, head to sportsmanguides.com and you can also find the links for all the gear that I used in case you're wondering about that too. So this was the essence of Wilderness at Table, and I'll see you next time in the next episode. So where's mine, guys? Next time on Wilderness to Table. Sit back on. Back on. Okay. You got a live alligator. Back alligator. He's a live oh, guy. Oh Come on. Bree, you're the one. Live gator. Come on back with it. He's a live guy. Live gator. I don't even know what to say right now. If he takes off with you, uh, just step just, to the side, okay? <laughs> just hold on to him. He'll just take you for a ride. No! Welcome to Let's Talk About It, where tacos are my jam. Today, I'm getting surprised by one of my members of my crew. My cameraman, Tormi, he's got something up his sleeve. He is about to give me a bag of items that I have no idea what's in it, and you know what? We're gonna make a taco out of whatever's in this bag. Good luck with it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I have shrimp, tail on, and some shishito peppers. I actually love shishito peppers. They're delicious. Um, yeah, let's get started. I have no recipe for this. I'm gonna totally make it up on the fly as we go. 
But you know what? That's what tacos are about. We are gonna add, get my pan on. So we gotta cook our shrimp. Let's do that. We're gonna add, what do I wanna add? We're, we're gonna go with olive oil. We're gonna go with olive oil to do the shrimp. Put a little in the pan. We're gonna get our shrimp out. So I'm gonna put my sashito peppers down first. And I wanna blister these. So I'm gonna add the shrimp to my pan. I'm gonna add some garlic. And then I'm gonna season the salt and pepper. Always, always season. Okay. Then, let's see, give that a whirl. I'm debating. We're gonna go. We're gonna go Asian. So I'm gonna use a little bit of soy sauce here in the pan. Then I'm gonna do a teeny bit of sambal. Yeah, I think that's good for right now. We're gonna get that going. Oh yeah. Okay, so now we gotta think garnishes. What's gonna go on top? I got this awesome flat top next to me. So all we're really gonna do is drizzle some olive oil on top. And then I'm gonna take my tortilla and use it as a brush. See? And then that gets the oil on the tortilla as well. Let's, go, let's put four down. Four tortillas are good. Then we're going to plate. squeezed lime juice right over. Just to brighten it up with a little bit of acid. And there you have it. Shrimp and sashito tacos. Mm -hmm.